everyone welcome back to my channel i am cynthia also known as creative mama of three on youtube and on instagram and today is day eight of vlogmas and i have a new coffee mug yes another penguin mug this one has a green background which i don't have any other green backgrounds we have a penguin snowman um what is that like a clown reindeer and santa claus and every morning my husband makes me a great cup of coffee and it's delicious. Cheers. Okay, let me put that down so we can get started with today's vlog. Um, this is going to be a long one because I actually have a full tutorial on the last shirt that I made for my youngest daughter. So this is the third shirt in the um, of Ellie and Ellie and Mac patterns is the going home sweater it's a raglan shirt and this is the third one that i've made for my daughters for our christmas pictures which we should be taking in a couple of days so i will insert the video here please enjoy okay i am at it again this is the fourth ellie and mac pattern going home sweater it is a raglan and this is for my youngest daughter and this would complete uh, the set of three of these shirts that I've made for my daughters for our Christmas pictures. And yes, there is a can of pineapples right here. Because who doesn't use a can of pineapples to hold down your pattern while you're cutting it out? I don't know. I don't know anyone who doesn't. Do you? I know we all do that. So... I am going to kind of give you a small tutorial on how to put this together. Uh, it's very easy to put this together. Okay. Okay, everyone, I'm going to show you how I kind of pin this together and then I will uh, show you how I do it. Okay, with the Ellie and Mac patterns, they don't have notches in them. So what I do is with the back one, I put my own notches in where the sleeve goes. And I kind of use the normal method where I just cut two for the back and usually one for the front, but for some reason I forgot to do that on this. But as long as the back is marked on the bodice and on the sleeve, because the sleeve can get a little complicated. Let's see, where is where are my notches? Okay, so that one doesn't have a notch. And this side has the double notch. Okay, so I know that this is the back of my sleeve that's gonna to go to the back of my bodice. So what I'm gonna do is, this sleeve has no right or wrong side, they're the same. So it doesn't matter which one I use, which is always helpful. So well, sometimes it could be helpful and sometimes not. So what I'm going to do is take, this is my back. My back piece. Okay, now this is the neck because this is a raglan and then these are the sleeves. So this is the back sleeve, the back part of the, the shirt. So I'm going to, now the notches will not line up because I just did them willy-nilly. I just did it for my, my personal knowledge. It's not marked on the pattern so it's, they're not lined up, which is fine. So I'm gonna just, let's make sure, okay, the notches are there and the notches are there. So then I'm just going to, let me get my pins. They were a little far away. I'm gonna take my pins. I like the ones with the balls on them. I just find them to be a lot easier. So then we're just gonna take these here and I'm going to first do the neckline. Get them. Now this red fabric is very silky and slippery than the plaid fabric. The plaid fabric is a doodles. This um, red fabric, I don't know. It was a remnant from Joann's. And this was one thing I like about doing raglan tops because you can use a remnant for the sleeves because the sleeves take probably a half a yard, depending on the direction of the fabric. And this is not directional fabric, so. So that's okay. And then 
Okay, let's just shake it out a little bit because this red fabric is kind of getting sticky to the fat to the other fabric. We want to make sure that they're lined up as much as possible. I have to do a little bit one from one side, one from the other side. Now, if the pattern came with notches, then you would match the notches up. But this pattern did not come with the notches. So I just do it this way since I created the notches. Try not to stretch any of the fabric, the bottom or the top. We just want to gently have them together. Okay, I'm going to put a few more. Like I said, this fabric is very slippery. Okay, so that's it. And then we are going to sew that. Okay, so this is the back panel and I sewed both sleeves. Um, I sewed the other sleeve off, you know, off camera and I put that together. So now what we want to do is we want to take the front panel, which let's, oops, let's get this one done here. Now this is the front. So we're going to lay it naturally right sides together. Okay. And then let's get it, oh, let's lay it flat. And then we're going to take, now this piece here, this is part of the shoulder seam. So we're not going to sew that right now. We're going to take this piece here, which is part of the seam, the shoulder seam, and we're going to pin it to here. And we're going to do that right sides together. Now this is also the neck. So we don't want to do anything with that. That neckband is going to go on that. Sorry, my camera is a little crooked. I'm trying a new, new technique. Okay, so we want to do it this way here. I'm going to actually flip it because this... Okay, give me just a moment here. Because this red fabric is very silky, because this red fabric is very silky, I would like to have that on top so I can make sure that I'm doing things correctly. So we're going to do, where's the neck? Okay, that's the neck. So we want to do it to the sleeve, which is here. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going to fast forward this footage of me pinning the neck down. Okay, I am going to now sew down this seam and then I will also pin and do the other side as well off camera. Okay, after sewing the shoulder seams, the front and the back, what you do is then you go from, now you gotta do the side seams. So I usually start here, I match up the shoulder and the body seam together and then pin all the way down here to the end and then do the same thing for the sleeve pin it from here to the cuff and then you could sew normally i would sew from the bottom all the way up to the top and then keep going and then you're ready for the collar Okay, so this is now the neckband. It's folded. Just need to do some stitches. Make it into a circle. Let's get it together. This, this fabric is very, very, very slippery. Oops. Okay. 
and then turn on my machine. That would be helpful. Okay, and we're just going to do it this way here. I like to get it in there. And... <clears throat> the cutter okay so there's our our neckband stitch now let's attach it to our shirt okay here is my neckband okay I zoomed out now what I like to do is I like to find the middle sections here so I'm going to take my pins take one pin Okay, so then the middle of the back neck is about here. I'm going to put that there. And then I like to take the front and like match that up. Make sure that that's the middle of the front. And then let's take another pin. And let's also put that in there mark that and then also the same thing with the sides i'm going to mark that one and then we're going to mark that one I'm going to do this a little off camera so I can see it. Okay, so then we do it with that. Then we're going to take the bayonet band and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the neck band that we sewed together. Now we have to put wrong sides together. And then what we do is we take that and then I'm going to find the center on the other side, which is about here. And let's fold that in half, wrong sides together. Very, very slippery knit. I'm going to put a pin there. And then we're going to put a pin on this one here. Put those two pieces together. Put a pin on there. Okay, and then we're going to put these pin points together to get the other sides. Okay, it's about here. And we're going to okay, just double check that. Yep, that looks really good. So we're going to put a straight pin here. And then we're going to line up the two middle ones again. So that we can get this one on this side and this one looks a little easier to get together okay let's make sure let's check it again And then I'm going to match the sa these safety pins with the safety pins on my shirt. Okay, I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll show you what it looks like.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching that video. I just wanted to also point out that the method that, the method that I used to put this shirt together is not only for the Going Home Sweater by Ellie and Mac, but is usually the basic construction of all raglan type shirts. It's pretty much a standard, straightforward um, put together. And let me show you the finished product. Here it is. My daughter tried it on. I will put a picture um, I guess up here, <laughs> I'll put a picture up here for you to see. Um, it fits great. Like I said in the previous videos, I actually did a size larger than what she was measuring and that was a perfect fit. So like I said in the video, the this plaid fabric is doodles that I got from Joann's probably three or four years ago. And then this knit for the sleeves, it's a very silky, very stretchy knit. But um, she loved this particular red that went with it. And then after the video, the only thing left to do was to hem the sleeves and hem the body of, of the shirt, which is pretty straightforward. So I didn't think I needed to show you guys that. So I think it came out great. So this is the third and last Ellie and, Ellie and Mac going home sweater that I need to make before we could take our pictures. And if you haven't seen the other two um, raglans that I made for my other two daughters, I will link the playlist and the end screen and I'll also link it in the description box below. So thank you for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you want to see the rest of my vlogmas or rest of tutorials that I may put up. And also comment and let me know if you guys, are, if everyone's taking their own family pictures. And if so, are you making the outfits for it? So please let me know. I hope where you are, the sun is shining. I hope your holidays are wonderful. And I hope that you have time to be creative every day, even if it's just for a little bit. Thank you and have a great day.